When you place either a layered affinity, PDF, DWG or DXF file into your document, you now have the ability to control which layers are visible at any given time. So let's take a look at how this works by starting with this blank document here. We can introduce our placed file in a number of different ways. The easiest is with the place image tool found on the left hand toolbar. We can now locate our file from our finder window and either click and drag or single click to drop it into place. Alternatively, we can drag our image in from our finder window to place it at the original size, or when holding Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, we can initiate the same placing functionality and control the sizing that our image is being placed at. So now we have our new document in place, we can utilize some of the new context toolbar options we have up here. As with any placed file, we can adjust the scale percentage and the image DPI, or change to reset these to the original document settings. Here we can also change the visible page box to a range of options. With this example, if I opt for maximum content, you can see that the boundary changes to fit with the contents I have in my document. But for this example, I want to use Trimbox, as this will match the document dimensions of my original file. Now we can experiment with our layout options. This file has been set up to have all of my interior sections grouped into their own separate layers. We can see how these can be toggled on and off by simply selecting the layer name accordingly. We can also choose to show all or hide all, allowing us to start from a blank canvas and build up our design again one layer at a time. What I'd like to do is arrange this document into four versions of this design, each with a different configuration of layer elements, which saves me having to export four different versions of my original file and placing those individually. First, let's use Option click and drag on Mac or Alt click and drag on Windows to create our duplicated artboards. And let's go ahead and rename each one as well. I'm also going to add this color rectangular overlay to each artboard too, just to add another little variation to each of the designs. So let's give this first one a yellow color and let's copy this into the next artboard. Give this one a purple color. Copy this one into the next artboard. And let's go for more of a green color this time. And finally, with the last artboard, let's go for more of a pink red color. I'm also going to select each of the rectangles holding shift and I'll change the blend mode to saturation. Finally, to make sure I don't accidentally select these layers, I'm going to click on the lock icon as well. Now what we can do is go through each of our duplicated artboards and decide what we want to include. With my first design, I'd like to stick with just showing the line work. So with the second one, I'd like to highlight some of the window elements. With the third one, let's highlight these wooden steps. And with the fourth artboard, let's focus on the concrete areas, which in this case is split over two separate layers. It's worth just highlighting that one of the benefits to using this method is that we only have one file embedded in our document. So if we head over to the resource manager, we can see that there are four copies of the same file. This is quite beneficial if we wanted to package this document up as it would only need to include a single file instead of adding unnecessary duplicated versions in our final package folder. Finally, in order to export these four room design variations simultaneously, we can simply head over to the export persona in the top left and we can see that these four artboards have already been converted into export slices. So we can choose the preset we want here, click export and they'll be ready to use exactly as intended. So that was a brief look into placing layers and the layer visibility feature in Affinity Designer. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.